fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's danger on the trail ahead! Hail Silver! Away! Outside the home of the driver of the Overland Express stage in Prairie City, two boys stood admiring the faded yellow coach and the team of four horses which were waiting to make the regular run to Dobie. One of the youths, Danny Kern, was the stage driver's son. The other was his friend. Someday I'm going to be a stage driver, just like my dad. It takes muscle to drive a four-in-hand. Well, you bet, and I got it. Huh? Oh, look at this if you don't believe me. Yeah, that ain't so much. It's better than you can do. Well, I bet you can't drive a stage now. Oh, I bet you I can. I've already done it. When? Well, lots of times. Whenever Dad takes me on one of his trips. Uh, you're just fooling. I am not. If Dad wasn't going to drive that stage soon, I'd show you. Go on. I dare you to drive it. I tell you, Dad's taking it out on his run. Yeah, it's easy to talk. Will you go with me if I do? You mean, you mean you'll drive it? If you go with me. Well, I... You afraid? Of course not. Well, come on, then. All right, come on. Quickly, the two boys scurried to the driver's seat of the stage, and Danny scooped up the reins. With an air of authority, he spoke to the horses, then released the brake. Get up there. Get up, horse. We're moving. Well, of course we are. I told you I could drive. Yeah, where will we go? Out on the trail. Then I'll show you some real driving. Are you sure you know how? Oh, Freddy, can't look at him turning green. I am not. Well, hang on, then. Here we go. Get out. Get out there. Through the main street of town lumbered the stage, while town folk gaped at the two boys who sat on the driver's seat. Heedless of the warnings that were shouted after them, Danny headed the four in hand for the Doby Trail. Boy, look at them horses. What? Say, hey, this is fun. I bet I could drive it clear to Doby. You ain't going to, though, are you? Oh, not this time. Dad, it skinned me alive. Well, how far are you going? Well, just for a spell down the road. You sure can't handle them horses, Dan. Hey, you want to try your hand? Do you think I could? Oh, sure, as long as I'm here to help you. Well, maybe I'd better not. What are you scared of? Here, let me change places with you. As Dan half stood in the driver's seat of the fast-moving stage, two riders quickly reined in their horses. One of them was a tall man who wore a white hat and a black mask. The other was an Indian. A boy is driving that stage, Tonto. Huh. Now he's changing places with the other. Mm, that's plenty dangerous. Yes, it's suicide. The stage is heading for a sharp curve. That's right. We must warn them. Come on, Silver. Come on. Come on. Urging the powerful white stallion and the sturdy paint forward, the masked man and his Indian friend rode to intercept the sage before it was too late. Master Silver! Tell him up! It'll be close, Tonto! Ah. 
Can't run any fast. We've got to beat it. I don't see that. From the fast-moving stage, the boys suddenly saw the dangerous curve ahead. Damn, look. Hey, give me those reins. Stop the horses. We'll overturn. Whoa, whoa there, whoa. They're running away. Whoa, whoa, horse. Pull up there. Look, a masked man and an engine. Outlaws. They're overtaking us. As the thundering stage drew closer and closer to the sharp curve ahead, the great horse Silver drew even with the driver's seat and leaped alongside the lead horse of the team. Quickly, the Lone Ranger grasped the team's reins. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, whoa! Reining on the reins, he slowly but surely pulled the team to a halt, virtually on the brink of the turn. The coach lumbered to a halt. What are you boys doing with this tape? Well, we, we, we were just taking it for a ride. A ride, huh? Well, you might have killed yourself. We won't do it again. Oh, no, I better take it back now. My dad's a regular driver. He'll need it for the run to Dover. I'll see you on your way. Help me turn the horses, Tonto. Ah. A few days later, across the arid wastes of a sun-bleached prairie, a puff of dust moved along a new wagon trail. Then a sudden breeze whisked the dust away, revealing a stagecoach bound for Prairie City. As the stage lurched wide around a bend... Two horsemen watched its approach. There's something wrong with that stage, Tonto. Ah, horses run away. Look at the garden driver. Ah, let me see. Something's happened to them. Let's go. Get him up. Come on, Silver. A half hour later, a strange procession filed down the main street of Prairie City toward the express office. The town folk gaped as it slowly lumbered past, then buzzed with excitement. Hey, Sheriff! Don't bother me, huh? Stage is here, Sheriff. It's been way late again. What's that? There it is. You can see for yourself. Look who's driving it. A masked man. And an engine. What is it, Sheriff? No yet, Rand, but I'm aiming to fire now. I'll go with you. Me too. Come down off that stage, you two. I've got you covered. Put those guns back in leather, Sheriff. Oh, they our friends. I'll decide for myself who you are, mister. Meanwhile, if either one of you make a wrong move, you'll get a slug from those six guns. Hey, Sheriff. Yeah? The driver and the guard, they're dead. There ain't a mark on them. Mark on them. This is the third time that's happened inside a month. Maybe they died of bad hearts or or something, Sheriff. Oh, you slow-witted maverick. If it had been just once, you might be right. But six corpses have been brought in by stage, and all without a mark on them. Right, Sheriff. What's more, the stage has been looted every time. That's right, Sheriff. There's no two ways about it. Those men were murdered. And this masked army, the engine, are the ones who did it. You're right there, too. These two men right. were dead when we found them. A likely story, eh, Sheriff? Who are you? I'm District Superintendent of the Stage Company, mister. And I'm charging you with murder and theft against the Overland Express. Hold on, Dan. Bring him up. It's Danny Curran, the stage driver's boy. Let me through. All right, get back there. Let the kid through. All Dad, right, get Dad, we're... Away. Dad! Dad! Your father is dead, Dan. Dad? You're the man. That's the man who killed him. Let's lynch them two murderers. Yeah, Come on, Tonto. Right. Steady, Silver. Out of my way. Now, hold on there. I'll get him. Not so fast. Oh, my hands. Come on, Tonto. Get him up. Come. They're getting away. Come on, Silver. Sometime later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode along the new stage trail, seeking a clue to the mysterious murders. Somewhere along this trail, six men were murdered, Tonto. Ah. No sign of injury. Who's come? Oh, 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 oh. oh. What is it, Tonto? You look there. He's a big fella. The stage was driven off the trail and alongside that boulder. Ah. We follow tracks. Maybe find something. There are three sets of wagon tracks leading from the trail. Isn't that right? Kimasabi, me find something. You look here on rock. Gold dust. At least it looks like it. And gold was stolen from the stage. Isn't that right? What that mean? Working alone, the outlaw found the loot too heavy to handle without dropping and breaking the boxes. Ah. So he drove the stage off the trail and slid them onto this boulder. And probably onto pack horses. This dust trickled from the boxes. Oh, Tonto Savvy now. That means he knew the garden driver would be dead when the stage got here. What kill him? Easy, big fella. The answer lies on the trail ahead, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout.
The next day, the sheriff was in the district office of the stage company, conferring with the manager. All oh, right, did I size things up? Oh, just a minute, Sheriff. Who's there? It's me, Mr. Rand. Danny Kern. Danny Kern? That's the son of the stage driver who was killed yesterday. I wonder what he wants. Well, ask him in and find out. All right. Come on in. Uh, sorry about your Paul's death, son. Yeah, me too. We mean to make it up to you by catching the yellow-livered coyote who killed him. Yeah, that mask man, his engine friend. Well, that's what I come to see you about, Mr. Rand. What? I want you to give me the chance to catch a critter that murdered my dad. What's that? Well, how can I give you the chance, boy? By giving me the job driving the stage my dad drove before he died. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> well, don't laugh. Oh, uh, sorry, son. But I thought I heard you say you wanted to drive the stage. I did. Gee, horse of fact, the kid's plumb serious. How old are you, boy? Fourteen. But I can handle a four in hand. Fourteen? You got size and weight enough to pass for eighteen. Where'd you learn to handle a four in hand? My dad taught me. He used to take me with him on some of his trips. And you think by taking your dad's place, you might meet up with a murderer, hmm, son? That's what I'm hoping. Well, the new stage trail runs through some pretty dangerous and deserted country, Danny. Yeah, driving that coach is a man's job. Only one water hole in the whole stretch. And when you come to it, you're so doggone thirsty, you like to drown yourself getting enough to drink. I want that job, Mr. Rand. You got the spunk for a stage driver, I'll say that, son. Mm, I don't know. I heard you needed drivers for the new stage trail since some killings commenced, Mr. Rand. Mm, that's so. I heard you couldn't get no experienced driver to take the job. <laughs> the boy's got you there, Rand. Well, six men have been murdered riding the stage on that trail. Yeah. And do you want the job in spite of it? Yes, sir. What makes you think you'd bring the stage through when six grown men haven't been able to? I'll bring them horses through all right, Mr. Rand. And when I get to Prairie City, I'll be driving them. They won't be pulling a corpse. Doggone it, Rand. Let the boy try it. I like his nerve. Just give me one chance, Mr. Rand. You haven't got anything to lose. No, no. Nothing but four good horses and a stage and cargo. Give the lad his chance. I've got an idea. All right, boy. The job's yours. Oh, thanks, Mr. Rand. Report to me here tomorrow. You'll take the stage to Doby in the morning and drive it back to Prairie City in the afternoon. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dan. Good luck to you. job, Rex. Now I'll get the critter that killed my dad. Get up, boy. Get up there. As the youth rode away, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched from a nearby concealment where they had listened to the conversation. I'm going in now, Tonto. Uh, I'll wait here. And not chase you? I don't think so. I have a hunch they'll map out a plan after I get what I came for. I want you to overhear that plan. Uh. Tonto's happy. I'll wait for you at the fork outside of town. Adios. Adios. Hey, what the... The mask, man. Keep your guns in leather. They're covered. Put them shooting irons down, stranger, and surrender in the name of the law. I didn't come to surrender, Sheriff. So you admit you're the killer. You'll think that, whether I deny it or not, Rand. And you are the murdering coyote. No, I'm not, Sheriff. I came here for information. Information? What kind? I want to know when the stage leaves here for Doby tomorrow morning. And when it's scheduled to leave Doby in the afternoon. So you can murder more of our men and loot the coach again, huh? You're becoming insistent on that point, Rand. I don't like it. Pretty brave when you're standing behind them six guns, aren't you? You think it'd be a match for me if I weren't? <laughs> I'd be twice the match of the likes of you, mister. Sheriff, here are my guns. What? Now, Rand... Prove your point. I'll prove it. <coughs> Miss that swing, Rand. Well, I won't miss this. Oh. That'll do for you, Rand. What a wallop you got, stranger. Flush on the jaw. Now, Rand, I'll take that information. Uh, it's, it's against the rules to give to anybody except them who buys a fare. Very well, I'll buy one. Oh, I, uh... Uh, never mind, Rand. That chart on the wall seems to be the schedule. I'll just help myself. No, no, stop him, Sheriff. My gun, Sheriff, if you please. He's getting away. Stop him. Gone it. I've never seen anything like that masked man. Never. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After the Lone Ranger escaped in a hail of bullets, Tonto crept closer outside the window and listened. That's the second time you've let that mask on break get away from you, Sheriff. How are you going to hang on to grease like that? Well, you better do something to catch him pretty quick. Well, I'm aiming to. Oh. What's the stage freight in Adobe tomorrow? Oh, nothing valuable. What's it carrying on the return trip? Gold. Gold, eh? You think we better move the shipment back a couple of days? No. That gold's going to stick to schedule. But I can't we'll afford... We'll use it as bait to lure the masked man into a trap. Oh. What's your plan, Jeff? I'll ride the stage on the return trip myself. I'll take the job as guard of the gold. You mean... And I'll swear in a lot of new deputies today to post along the trail. All along the trail? Yeah, but regular intervals. Well, ain't no sense in stationing them in dry gold, Sheriff. That part of the trail's clean deserted. Ain't even a shrub for the murderer to hide behind. I'm not taking any chances. Well, I guess you're right. Yeah, we'll have that killer bottled up no matter where he strikes. Yeah. Well, I'll be getting along. I've got a lot of deputies to swear in before tomorrow. <laughs> So you think you'll have the killer bottled up, I sheriff? <laughs> Get him up! Come on. Urging his sturdy paint ahead, Tonto rode to the fork outside of town where the Lone Ranger waited. He quickly reported what he had heard. So the sheriff is posting men all along the trail, huh, Tonto? Isn't that right? That's the surest way to scare the killer off. Uh. To capture the murderer... We'll have to get those deputies away from the trail. Mm. What can we do? Well, I have a plan, Tonto. But it'll require a third person to carry it out. Oh. Someone we can trust. You know a person? Yes, I think I do, Kimosabe. Come on, Silver. Oh, good fellow. Get him up. Come It was dusk when on the trail not far from town, Danny Kern heard the thunder of distant hoofs and looking back, saw a white stallion with a masked rider rapidly approaching. For a moment, he sat transfixed as the great horse Silver raced toward him through the gathering shadows of night. Then, recognizing the rider as the stranger he and Tad had met on the trail, the mysterious masked man whom he believed had murdered his father, Dan spurred his horse ahead. The masked man! Get up, Rex! We ain't got a chance against him without a gun! Get up, boy! Wait, Dan! I want to talk to you! Come on, Rex! But try as he would to stretch the distance between him and the masked man, Dan soon found his efforts were of little avail. The onrushing stallion rapidly bridged the gap with powerful, sinewy strides, and the Lone Ranger reached for Dan's bridle. Oh, Sir Silver! Take your hands off that rein! Oh, Silver, Horex, ho! Oh. Suppose you're going to kill me just like you did my dad. I didn't kill your father, Dan. You've got to believe that. Oh, Scott, no fun at all. I suppose this engine's innocent, too. Paul and I would like to be your friends, Dan. Ah. Uh, you can't trick me like that. Dan. Do you want to capture the man who killed your father? You bet I do. And you're him. Tonto and I have a plan to trap the killer, but we need your help. Oh, you don't fool me none, mister. If you really wanted to catch the killer, you'd just walk into the sheriff's office and give yourself up. Perhaps uh, this will change your mind about me. What? That's a silver bullet. A silver bullet? A masked man on a white horse. What? You're the Lone Ranger. Shall we talk about that plan now, Dan? You bet we will. <laughs> Late the following afternoon, there was a bustle of activity before the express office in Doby. It was almost time for the departure of the stage for Prairie City, and an exceptionally large and curious crowd of town folk had gathered to watch how the 14-year-old son of the slain stage driver handled the four-in-hand on his return run. But Dan, made confident by the success of his trip from Prairie City, ignored their interest and whispered comments with the aplomb of a veteran. Whoa! Hold up there, horse! Whoa! Whoa there! Whoa! All right, Hank! Get them horses to the stage! Just as you say, Danny. Well, you handle that four and hand like a veteran already, son. Thanks, Sheriff. Hey, gold all stored aboard? Everything's in order. Good. Time to be moving, ain't it, Danny? Almost, Sheriff. We, uh, we got a passenger. A passenger? He's coming out of the office now. A tall man in nondescript clothes stepped out of the express office and into the stage. A secret preparation of wild berries and herbs applied to his face by Tonto had almost magically changed its appearance. Where not long before the Lone Ranger had stood, now walked an ordinary cow hand. Horses are all hitched, Danny. Thanks, Hank. You ready, Sheriff? Uh, that passenger. You better get moving if you want to make it to Prairie City on time. We're moving right now. Come on, Sheriff. Uh... All set, Dan. Get up there, horse! Get up there! Come on, get up! Get up, horse! Get up! Come on, get up! 
Leaving the outskirts of Doby, the stage gathered speed, then settled into a steady run under Dan's expert hands. Unknown to the sheriff, the quarry he so eagerly sought as he fastened his eyes on the trail sat disguised as a passenger inside the coach. How far are we from the water hole, Sheriff? Uh, quite a ways to go, yet, stranger. Have your men seen anything of the outlaw? No. Well, that masked fellow and his Indian friend hold at the stage this time, they'll find a mess of trouble. What's that? I don't know. It's coming from behind us. Why, it's your deputy, Sheriff. They're chasing someone. The injured. Come on, town. Oh, go, that red skin. Riding like the wind, Tonto dashed along the stage trail toward Prairie City with the sheriff's deputies in hot pursuit. Attracted by the thundering hoops and the sound of gunfire, each man in turn left his post and joined the chase. You follow me! You come! Agent! Come on, horse! Get up there! Past the express office in Prairie City sped the chase. Superintendent Rand went to the window to see what the excitement was. Get him up! Stupid fools. All of them leaving their post to chase one innocent engine. <laughs> it's just what I needed to give me a chance of that gold. Some time later, when Danny Kern brought the stage to a stop at the water hole, the afternoon sun blazed down on the trail with an almost intolerable heat, and dust clogged the hot air as the stage slowly rumbled to a halt. Fidgeting beside Dan on the driver's seat, the sheriff eyed the water hole with keen anticipation of a drink from it to cool his parched throat. Pull up there! Whoa! Easy there! Easy there! Whoa! Whoa there! Whoa! Man, I don't know about you two, but I'm making for that water pronto. I'm so dry I can drown myself. Oh, just a minute, sheriff. Come on there, horses. Oh, hold on, Danny. But you got no better sense than to let them horses drink first? They'll muddy up the water. Them horses are mighty thirsty, Sheriff. Uh, so am I. But I ain't hankering to drink water after horses have stirred it up. Well, maybe you better wait till we get to Prairie City for a drink, Sheriff. You gone loco, Rad? Get them horses out of here. Even muddy water's better than none. Suddenly, from the direction of the stage... A tall man who wore a white hat and a black mask and silver-mounted six-guns hung low at his hips strode toward the sheriff. Don't drink that water, sheriff. What? The masked man. Also, your passengers. You mean this? I removed my disguise in the coach, sheriff. Jumping juniper. And all my deputies went chasing that engine. That was necessary to give the killer a chance to expose himself. You don't have to expose yourself to me, mister. I know who you are. Dan, take this gun. Yes, sir. If he tries to drink that water, shoot him. What in thunder? Yes, sir. Uh, so you two are in cahoots all the time. The killer's as greedy for gold as I think he is, Sheriff. I'll bring him to you. What? Easy, big fella. Remember, Dan, don't let him drink that water. Yes, sir. Come on, Silver! Down the trail thundered the powerful white stallion. His flying hoof struck sparks from jutting stones, and his nostrils widened as the masked man urged him to even greater speed. Then, partly concealed by a boulder, they sighted their quarry. Whoa, Silver! Whoa, whoa! I want you, Rand. Keep your hands away from those holsters. What do you want? I want you for murder. Murder? You must be loco. No use stalling, Rand. I have proof. You'll ever take me. Oh, my hands. The second time for you, Rand. Get up there. Get up. No, you don't. Bless you. Oh, you wrote me out of my saddle. You're coming with me, Rand. Come on, Silver. Where, where are you taking me? To the water hole. You'll talk there. <laughs> At the water hole, in the baking heat of the afternoon sun, Dan Kern kept his vigil, watching the angry sheriff grow angrier by the minute as his eyes thirsted on the water Dan's guns wouldn't permit him to drink. Pleas, arguments, offers of leniency to Dan in exchange for a mouthful of the water availed him nothing, and he lapsed into bitterness. Uh, to think I encourage Rand to give you this job. 
And you working for the killer. I tell you, Sheriff, the masked man ain't the killer. I reckon your paw would say different. Well, the masked man will be back soon, then you'll see. Well, I want a drink of that water. My throat is parched. Oh, no, you don't. You don't touch that water. My throat's parched. You can't help it, Sheriff. My orders are you aren't to drink that water. Oh, boy. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, oh. Darn it. What's wrong with this water? It's poison, Sheriff. What? Well, Rand, what are you doing here? Arrest this man, Sheriff. Rand is a mysterious killer, Sheriff. It's a lie. When he saw Tonno chased by your deputies, he hurried to murder you and Dan as he did the others. Don't listen to him, Sheriff. I found him where I expected, at a boulder where he planned to rob the stage of the gold. Uh, is that right, Rand? No, no. I ask I... him what he's doing on the trail with these pack horses, Sheriff. I, uh... How could he kill six men and not leave a mark on them? He put poison in this water hole. Poison ordinarily used to kill insects. Oh, Dan's horses drank that water, and they're as healthy now as before. Horses aren't affected by the poison, Sheriff. Men are. So that's why you and Dan were so anxious not to let me drink. That's it, Sheriff. One hour after the six men drank here, they were dead. Rand waited at the boulder where he could be certain of it. He's lying, Sheriff. After looting the stage, Rand sent the horses on again. You'll find the stolen goods at his home. Why, you yellow-livered murderer! Don't touch me, Sheriff. I tell you, he's lying. If you want further proof, Sheriff, make him drink that water. Uh, Go on, Rand. Drink it. No. No, don't make me drink it. I'll confess. I killed him. I killed him. I ought to drown you in it, you murdering scum. I told you I'd help catch the murderer, didn't I, Sheriff? Yes, you did that, Danny. If it wasn't for you and the mask man, why, he's gone. Yep, he's gone. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 